that right. And uh, for me, it's a real pleasure to have uh, Al Lewis and Avali here as my guests. And uh, so wonderful to see you. Oh, really nice, is. Nice to be here, Janice. Thanks for and having we us. did actually... I've, I've met you before, Al, <laughs> but I never met Alva until a couple of weeks ago. And um, I've been playing the single on Radio 2 before it got on the playlist. Alva, how weird is it for you? Because, um, you know, you're not a local gal, are you? I'm not, no. I've been here two years, though. Uh-huh. But Mississippi is your home. It is, yeah. I grew up on the Gulf Coast, about an hour east of New Orleans. And why did you come here? Well, I came here with my fella. He's studying here, and so we've You're been You're married, to... I and I just married. said to you, that can't be possible, because you look about 15. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, I think. Um, you know, we, we marry young down in the South, so <laughs> I'm married, you know, he's basically my high school sweetheart, so we've been together since we How were How did you meet kids. him? Yeah, we, I was, you know, in a really, a really bad band in high school, and so we met at a gig, and um, so yeah. It was sort of the rest of his history. We have started hanging out when I think I was about 17, and then we just kind of followed each other around, and now we're here. And were you making music at the time? I was, yeah, but he's not musical. I mean, he's a great appreciator of music, but he's not musical. So what is he, a builder or an architect <laughs> or a banker? No, he's uh, studying theology, actually. Really? Yeah. Gosh, so quite a spiritual person. Yeah, yeah. So we have lots of great late-night talks over whiskey. Do you agree? So, yeah, I mean, you know, sure. Yeah, we always have good conversations. He's a wonderful man. Oh. Yeah. As long as you can talk and there's a humour, I always think that's of special, Of course, don't you? yeah. <laughs> um, so you come over here. How did you start doing music? Well, I lived in Nashville before I moved here, and that's how Al and I met, was through some Nashville friends. And so um, I moved over and, and really took advantage of a clean slate and started started writing. And then in January, Al and I started writing together. And um, kind of after the first song, we said, OK, maybe we're on to something. And then after about three or four songs, we said, this is this is not Al Valley, this is not Al Lewis, this is something else. And so that's how Lewis and Lee was born. Because that's quite interesting, because I knew you, Al Lewis, and I thought you were fantastic. I remember coming to see you perform in an office, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. A tiny office. And I just thought you were amazing. And at that point, I thought you were quite folky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, you two get together, and this is the whole country thing that is going on that I absolutely adore. And I have to be honest, there's you two, and there's Zervis and Pepper, who I think rule the world at the moment <laughs> in country duos. You're absolutely amazing. Um, how did that transition feel to you, Al? Um, I think. I'd I'd probably always had that appreciation of country music, but maybe not had the confidence because I was from Wales. I maybe felt like I didn't. What Welsh don't do country? Yeah, or... I suppose that. I felt like we didn't really have have possession or have ownership of country music, and I didn't want to be perceived as being a a fake. You know, trying to what's this Welsh guy doing singing country music? Well, there are certain people who do it in a kind of. American twang. I mean, you can do it, Alva, exactly. but you can't. Exactly. <laughs> so that's why I, I needed Alva because uh, she gave me that authenticity, and it means that Lewis and Lee can be country, and no one can take that away from us. So, where was your love of country um, from? Was it parents? Yeah, I mean, I, I grew up listening to people like James Taylor, who, although you probably wouldn't say he's a country artist, he's got that country sensibility in the. Uh, instrumentation. Mm. There's loads of pedal steel on early. He, I mean, you know, he writes some songs about cowboys. Uh. Um, and and I'd always loved people like Graham Parsons, Amy Lou Harris, mm. and 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 Johnny Cash. You know, and, and so these these influences had always been there. And I suppose when I met Alva, then we were talking about who we liked and who inspired us, and it was all these sort of artists who had that country grounding and we thought well let's let's write the songs that we've always wanted to write but maybe had had reservations about doing so in the past so did it feel really easy was the flow very comfortable that's what yeah. we've always said it's just like it's so easy too easy it's too almost. easy scary <laughs> I t i'm touching wood here now <laughs> so not um, to jinx I think it's fake <laughs> 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 anyway let's have a listen there isn't they and what is there to do And 
Lee and what is there to do? And can I just say hello to somebody who is in Cardiff oh. at the One Mile Bakery? And uh, she's great. She's Elizabeth Mahoney. And uh, I just want to say um, AJ and um, lots of love to you and big thoughts and hope you're enjoying the music and uh, we love you. So, yes, we have Lewis and Lee, Alva and Al. Well, actually, it's the other way around. Al Lewis and Alva uh, Lee. Um, so, wh where do you live and how do you work? How do you operate? Oh, I live in Tooting, south-west London. Oh, so you're not in Wales anymore? No, no, I've been in London now for a few years. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, um, and that's that's why Lewis and Lee sort of came to existence. So you're south, and yeah. also you're apparently where it's very up and coming. Oh, that's what they I tell me. The that's what they tell me, Janice. <laughs> and I Albert think it's since I moved there, really. <laughs> yeah, I used to love going to Tooting. Um, I lived in um, Clapham for a while. Oh yeah. Uh, when I first because Radio Two moved me down here seven years ago, and I used to go there because you could get like a really brilliant Indian meal in the calf for oh. four quid. In Tooting, amazing. Yeah, Tooting is the place for oh, Indian takeaways great. or restaurants. Yeah. Fabulous. And Camden. Yeah. 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 And Camden is full of tourists. It is. <laughs> yeah. And Americans. And Americans. <laughs> and Goths. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really like it though. Yeah, yeah, it's we're nice. We're close to the park, which is nice. A Regent's Park. Yeah. That's lovely. You can walk into London. For yeah. People who don't know. Um, Regent's Park where you've got the zoo and everything and you can actually just walk through the park and get into the centre of London very easily and it's a gorgeous walk isn't it? It is, yeah. Mm. yeah. And how do you find, because there um, you've got a whole music scene going on, lots of venues and clubs and stuff. Yeah, we were just up there tonight actually in the market at Dingwalls, seeing Sturgill Simpson. So it's great to um, be near all these great venues and and yeah, when I first moved here, I would do um, open mics at the Green Note, so that was fun. What was that like, though? That must be quite nervous, not being in your, you know, your home territory. It's good for you. I think you have to, um, yeah, cut your teeth with new people, and um, it was good. Do you have to be brave to do that, though? I couldn't do it. <laughs> um, I guess. I mean, if if you want to be in this business, I guess you have to start somewhere. So. Um, you would just sort of see the same people at all the open mics, so it wasn't that many newcomers. You would sort of just see the same faces. So it kind of became like you were playing to sort of acquaintances um, that would be very kind and always clap and, you know, no one would ever boo you off stage or anything. So it was, it was Which is fun. nice, that's good. But what are you doing it for, to try out songs or to give you self-confidence? Yeah, that's what I was doing it for at the time, yeah. When I was sort of writing new material, I would go out and play it there and, um, yeah, it was it was fun. Did you ever do that, Al? Play open mics? Oh yeah, I think that's where everyone. It's like the apprenticeship of songwriters, isn't it? It's where you find out your good ones and your bad ones, and you can always tell by the amount of applause whether it's a good song or not. I think. But it's such a brave thing to do. I think I I think it's like Alva said. You know, it's it's it develops that thick skin that every performer needs because there are going to be nights when you play a song and then there is literally nothing coming back from you and then you feel like the smallest person in the room and you just have to grit grit your teeth and, and so w when that happens when you actually go out and there might be two people three out you yeah, know i've yeah. been to a gig yeah yeah where there's been three or four people and i'm just like oh my god how do they feel when they go into that back room what's it like are you are you insinuating that I've played to three no, people? Not you. <laughs> not you. I'm not saying you. I'm not I'm saying joking. you. I'm joking. I have. I've played to I three. Really I've played to two. No, it's uh, it, it's uh, it's a humbling experience because if you've ever got um, illusions of grandeur and you think you're going to be this massive rock star and then you go out and there are like five, ten people in the audience, it's it brings you back down to earth very quickly. So what spurs you on? I think it's that wanting that desire to to say what you want to say through is your songs. Is it self-belief? Yeah, I think you, you, you've got to believe in yourself if you want to be a singer-songwriter because there are plenty of other people out there willing to take your place in a moment's notice. So you've got to, you've got to really fight for wanting to be on that stage. But I've always said in, in any kind of entertainment, there's an element of luck. Oh, it's yeah. you know being in the right place at the right time and maybe bumping into the right person. And that could all mean the matter of a couple of seconds. Do you know what I mean? It it, 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 it can all change. Um, do you ever look at people and go, how did they do it? Or, I mean, not for you necessarily, because I think you're 
you know, on a, a rise. And, no, you, you, know, always, you always wonder, you know, what, what break, like you said, what break in life did they get that landed them that amazing opportunity? But then I think if you scratch underneath the surface, you'll find that most people who have achieved something of note in life, there will be uh, a stiff backbone there because nothing comes easy. And so if they've reached a certain level, it's because they've worked hard, whether it's visible to the outside eye or not. Mm. I think it's... There's often something behind behind every mm. success, really. No, I agree. Uh, right, so you mentioned Sturgill Simpson uh, before at... Um, uh, Dingwalls. Dingwalls, yeah. which is about to close. Is it? Yeah, it's going, that's going to be oh. raised to the ground. Well, I think they're going to rebuild it. Oh, but yeah. I love that venue. Yeah, um, it's one of those classic where your feet stick to the floor, as it did tonight. <laughs> but also what I like about it, for those people who don't know Dingwalls, um, it's a venue in London and it's in Camden Lock. But it's really great the way it's... Um, it's gradual, isn't it? Yeah. So everybody can see. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, you have nice. no problem with watching the artist. So tell me more about Sturgill. Uh, well, he is uh, a relatively new country artist. Um, I first heard of him at the beginning of this year when I was uh, first writing with Alva and I was exploring country music because there was so much of it, well, like any genre really, when you first introduce yourself, I mean, where do you begin? Um, so I did a bit of research online and found that he was someone that a lot of people were talking about. And his album is called Meta Modern Sounds in Country Music, which if that doesn't prick your interest, then I don't know what will. And uh, he just sings great songs uh, about things that people can relate to and, and that people maybe who are performers can relate to because a lot of his songs about life on the road and being away from home and stuff. So, um, yeah, he put on a great show tonight and we thought it would be a nice tie-in seeing as we were coming in to see you to play one of his songs. Simpson and Long White Line and Alva and Al and that's Lewis and Lee should be the other way around really uh, are my guests uh, picking some tunes and doing the spoken word and Alva Peden who's in Nashville happy birthday you that's Alva's mum <laughs> now I've got a vision you see this is, you know, where I get it completely wrong, but your mum's sitting on a porch now, <laughs> having a beer. <laughs> probably not. Probably red wine. She's definitely she... red wine. <laughs> oh. But definitely well, on say a happy porch. Birthday. Happy birthday, Mom. Oh, how lovely. She must be so proud of you. Yeah, we called her when we got onto the BBC Radio 2 playlist, and she, she said, oh, because she doesn't really understand BBC radio. Uh. And she goes, oh, does that, does that mean y'all are going to get paid now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, your daughter's getting a little bit of money. <laughs> it was pretty great. It and your really daughter great. is being heard all over the world now, <laughs> Alva Peden. Um, she'll be listened to in Australia and New York and China and God oh. knows where else and all over the wow. UK on the biggest station, uh, radio station in the world, which is fantastic. Wow. Um, how do you feel about when, when, when you actually, you know, hear that people are playing your tunes? It must be really exciting. Yes. There are lots of words that I was told I couldn't say, <laughs> but it's a lot of those great words. Um, it's it's pretty amazing, yeah. Because it, as you know, as I mentioned before, it's it's been incredibly quick. It's been fast. Yeah, yeah. It's it's shocking actually. We we were rehearsing when we found out that we made the playlist and. And I think um, they might have thought that something terrible had happened because of the sort of embarrassing screams coming from the rehearsal room. We were very, very excited because this is all very new to me. So I'm quite honoured and, yeah, it's great. Oh, but you, Al, I mean, are you used to it, do you think? I think uh, I'll never get used to it because it's a lovely feeling, as you said, to 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 be in the car or at home and and you turn the radio on and you hear your song coming out it's it's still what you know what you dream as as a little boy to think that you, your music is going to be heard like you said all across the world it's 
It's amazing. So um, I'll and I'll never get used to it. I don't think, but it, it it's it's always that that first one. Like I was a bit jealous of Alva because I remember the that first moment is the most special when you first hear yourself on the radio. What is it about the whole country vibe that's going on at the moment? I think the TV show has probably got a lot to do with it. Um, I think that's brought a, a lot of people to country music that maybe wouldn't have been into it in the past. Um, I think I think music goes in in waves, and I think we've had the whole folk thing, um, the sort of post Mumford and Sons movement, um, and now you know people wanting something a bit different. And country music has always been there, bobbling along nicely, not sort of taking any notice of every, what everybody else is into. And I think people are latching on to that sort of um, endearing quality of country music that it sort of it doesn't care if it's cool or not. It's just, it's just what it is. And and if you like it, it will accept you. If you don't want it, it'll it'll be all right without you. But I'm from Liverpool, a huge folky, um, as you know. I went to folk clubs from you know when I was a teen. But there's always been a country thing in Liverpool. And in fact, when I moved to Birmingham, I was twiddling around on the car, you know, the car radio, and I thought, how fantastic. There's a country and western music station, oh, yeah. and it wasn't. It was Coventry and Warwickshire, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it is. It's huge. And I was really cross when I read, you know, that free paper you get the Metro mm-hmm. on the tube and stuff. And somebody was saying about country music the other day and saying it's really huge. And somebody, well, if it's that huge, it would be in the charts. But it is huge. Why isn't it in the charts? Um, I think it. It takes time in this country. I think it's still it's still something that is uh, not infiltrated the mainstream hundred percent. But you still have you have artists like Casey Musgraves, who I know was yeah, at yeah. the Radio yeah. Two um, um, Hyde Park yeah. Festival, you know, playing in front of thousands and thousands of people, and she is huge. I mean, she sold out Shepherd's Bush Empire, mm. and she's done big tours in the you UK. You don't need to be in the charts no. to be I mean, successful, there's, there's, do you? There's, there's different definitions of success these Ooh. days in the music business. It's not, it's not all about single sales, and 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 there are definite ways that country music is is really doing well. Um, I tell you what, we're going to play Sharon Van Etten, which you'll tell me about in a moment, and uh, then we'll do one of your spoken words. And I think Alva, it's going to be you. Great. Um, tell us about Sharon Van El- Van Elton. Well, Alva just mentioned seeing. Um uh, that Bob about Casey Musgrave selling out Shepherd's Bush, and yeah. I saw Sharon Bennett, and right after I moved here at Shepherd's Bush, and she was fantastic. Um, she's just one of these writers that is so honest, and she's got such a great voice. And we both um, loved the song, and when it, when it came out, I feel like we we played it just thousands of times. So it's just one that we're a really big fan of. Lewis Avali are my guests and obviously when you get um, guests in and you get in advance the tracks that they're going to pick and I listened to that uh, Sharon Van Essen and every time the sun comes up and I just thought it was absolutely amazing yeah. where's she from? Um, I think she lives in New York now but she uh-huh. briefly lived in Nashville actually she uh-huh. went to a little school outside of Nashville it's not little it's a big state school at, called Murphy's in Murfreesboro Tennessee the Middle Tennessee State University so I remember reading a really great article about her time in Nashville but I think she's based probably in probably in Brooklyn yeah it's amazing <laughs> really amazing I'm gonna explore more um, right what are you going to le- read for us Alva I'm gonna read the journey by Mary Oliver um, who is um, quite a famous yeah. poet, American poem. Yeah. Probably one of the most famous yeah. American poets. Yeah, she. Um, I was introduced to her work um, in college, uh-huh. and um, just lots of lovely nature images, kind of you know reminiscent of Thoreau and Emerson, and um, yeah, it's just a really beautiful poem. I really love it. Excuse me. <clears throat> so what's it called? The Journey and by Mary Oliver. It? Yes. Read it, please. One day you finally knew what you had to do and began, though the voices around you kept shouting their bad advice. 
though the whole house began to tremble and you felt the old tug at your ankles. Mend my life, each voice cried, but you didn't stop. You knew what you had to do, though the wind pried with its stiff fingers at the very foundations, though their melancholy was terrible. It was already late enough, in a wild night, and the road full of fallen branches and stones. But little by little, as you left their voices behind, the stars began to burn through the sheets of clouds, and there was a new voice which you slowly recognized as your own that you kept you company as you strode deeper and deeper into the world, determined to do the only that you could do, determined to save the only life you could save. Now, when I first read that, I wasn't quite sure what it was about, and I thought she was going to kill herself. Mm. But I don't think it is. To, you know, when I read it again and then again, I thought, no, she's going to do what she wants to do. Yeah, I think it's quite it's hopeful positive. at the end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it means a lot to me just sort of um, leaving a place that was so comfortable and Nashville mm. was such a, a great community and kind of coming on this journey to London and and um, sort of finding a new voice. And, yeah, it's it has a new meaning now. Yeah. That's no, a wonderful piece, The Journey by Mary Oliver. Uh, right, we're going to play some more music. Who's picked Jenny Lewis? She's not me. Yeah, we went to see Jenny a couple of weeks ago. Jenny, like I say that like we know her. <laughs> but um, she was amazing. She was amazing. Mm. And this is um, her newest single out that was uh, produced by Ryan Adams. And we, we just love it. I'm sitting here and I'm watching uh, Al Lewis and Alva Lee singing along to that heads go <laughs> from side to side, knowing all of the words. You both love that track, obviously. Yeah, it's a great tune. <laughs> um, right, Al, it's your turn. Dylan Thomas. Slightly yeah. obvious. I know, I know. But um, this is a very important year uh, for Dylan Thomas because it would have been his 100th I birthday. Know, I know. Um, so I think it's a, it's it's important that we celebrate his work. And, uh, and is that sort of all over Wales, people yeah, feel incredibly I mean, proud? I think so. I mean, it's... it's um, Not all his work, I don't think, is accessible, but um, there are certain pieces that I think most people can can read and relate to, and, and I think it's important that we celebrate having such a talented poet is it Wales. in schools celebrated all of the time yeah like they we do Shakespeare or they, whatever. Um, yeah. they have created an initiative because of this hundred year celebration um, to to bring more of his work into Welsh uh, curriculums which good. is great yeah good and what's it like living in you know one of the most beautiful places in the world I always say on the radio I don't to know loads about it because it is so gorgeous. <laughs> you want to be the only person that goes yeah. to Wales and go, goes to Gower or Solver or White Sands or you know North Wales. I mean, there are so many beautiful places. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not hard to be inspired by the landscape mm. uh, back home. It is uh, truly beautiful, and I think I appreciate it a lot more now that I don't get to see it so often. I think. Absence certainly has made my heart grow fonder for it. And you're Welsh language speaking. Yes, yeah. And um, this is one of my things. I'm moving back to Liverpool and I'm looking for my Welsh language class. Oh, OK, I'm sure yeah. there must be one. Uh, I am. <laughs> That's as far as I go. <laughs> my mother was uh, evacuated there when she was tiny during the, uh, you know, the Second World War, and she spoke Welsh, so it was mm. always something that... Um, I always went to Wales to see Uncle Dick and Auntie Annie, who looked <laughs> after her when she was evacuated, and they gave, her off, gave us our first pet, Bloodwyn Delbach, oh. who was a budgie. A budgie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I adore Wales. Anyway, In My Craft or Sullen Art by Dylan Thomas, if you would. Yeah. In My Craft or Sullen Art, exercised in the still night... When only the moon rages and the lovers lie abed With all their greaves in their arms I labour by singing light Not for ambition or bread 
all the strut and trade of charms on the ivory stages, but for the common wages of their most secret heart. Nought for the proud men apart, from the raging moon I write, on these spindrift pages, nor for the towering dead with their nightingales and psalms, but for the lovers, their arms round the griefs of the ages, who pay no praise or wages, nor heed my craft or art. It's a brilliant piece, isn't it? I read it so many times today. I could never have thought of that, could you? <laughs> no, I mean, when the vocabulary and the, the phrasing of it all, it's... Uh... It's amazing. The way he's, he says what a lot of, I think, creative people feel like sometimes, mm. that no one cares what you do. and <laughs> Well, it, it's not doing it for the money. Exactly, doing it for the love of because doing it. Because you love it. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, that's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Whiskey Town, Jacksonville Skyline. Have you both picked this as well? Yeah, this is the song that kind of made us realise that we had... Uh, our musical ideologies were were pretty in sync because uh, when I said, "Oh, have you heard of this?" and Alva was like, "Yeah, it's one of my favourite songs." I was like, "This is one of my favourite songs." So we thought this would be a very apt song to to play with you tonight. It's weird, this isn't it? You kind of met, you know, sprinkly dust went on somewhere. Definitely. <laughs> Whiskey Town, uh, Jacksonville, Skyline, and my guests are Al Lewis and Alva Lee. And just to let you know that um, there are posters, uh, huge, giant posters, going up all around Swansea uh, to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Dylan Thomas's birth um, in the city at the end of October. And uh, they're huge, they're going all over the place. And uh, it'll be fantastic. Will you be there, do you think, for that? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm planning to certainly do some sort of uh, Dylan Thomas celebration because uh, I have a song that I wrote inspired by one of his pieces, so um, I feel very, very connected to him. You must do. Um, do you feel that whole Welsh connection? I do. I think uh, I'm, I'm proud of him because he, he spread his wings and... Uh, moved to New York and became recognised internationally. I think uh, we're, we're quite a shy nation as Welsh people, and we don't like to brag, and we're we're sometimes afraid to to uh, to show our, our talents. And I think that's why I'm I'm proud to shout about Dylan Thomas because he deserves to be shouted about. And what about you, Alva? Do you feel proud of where you're from? Of course, yeah. I think it's one of those things that you learn about when you move away from it. You kind of, um, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder, as I was saying earlier about the landscape of Wales. Um, but yeah, I am proud of where I'm from, though it's uh, got sort of a complicated past, you know, Mississippi. and uh, yeah. um, But there's a lot of, you know, I don't know, a lot of great art has come from that struggle. And I'm, you know, I feel like you have to own that. And um, you... In some ways, they were they were quite honest about it. It's all quite out in the open, where every everyone, I guess, has their own struggles and um, darkness. So Mississippi is just, just very public, and so yeah, I'm proud to be from there. But it is also kind of a complicated relationship because there's a history of lots of you know bad things. But yeah, and I'm, you know there are many places that I'm from Liverpool and slave trade, and you know what I mean if you delve sure. into all of it. But um, yeah, still proud to be from there, and sorry for the things that went on. Of course. Yeah. Um, pleasure, absolute pleasure to have you here, and uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Lewis and Lee, Night Drives is the EP. Any dates coming up? Yeah, we've got our EP launch at the Betsy Trotwood in Farringdon, not far from That's Radio 2 HQ. Yeah, sorry, everybody who's not from <laughs> London. Um, but we're doing gigs. We're doing an in-store in Spillers Records in Cardiff. We're doing an in-store. Oh, I love that place. In, uh, Hello, Spillers. 
Hello Spillers in Union Music Store in Lewis near Brighton as well. Cool. Um, all our dates are on our website. Which is? Uh, lewisandlee.com. Okay. So they'll be appearing somewhere near you and go and see them because they are fab. And uh, another track from the AEP. Uh, this is Lewis and Lee and Ankeline. Thank you very much indeed for taking the time. Thank you really for having Really appreciate you, it. I silence all the voices in my head I strip away excuses and regrets What will I find? My anchor line Why does it have to be Harder than somebody For it to Absolutely love them. That's Lewis and Lee. And the EP is Night Drives, which is out on the 6th of October. And that track is Ankeline. And thank you so much uh, for taking the time to come in. BBC Radio 2, online on digital radio and on 88 to 91 FM.